I, I wanted to talk about the most important thing, development in your life in the last you know couple months. You uh you've got uh you've got retro golf club fever. How's I'm, life playing some retro clubs? I've got the vintage set a couple months in, uh the persimis. You were kind enough to send them to me. Uh it's been super fun. I mean, honestly, it's been really like people light up when they see them, when they watch me hit them, they want to hit them. It's been a whole thing, man. And um I've I've really had fun with it. It's been really cool. What have been the big takeaways uh, for you? You know, former PGA Tour player, made it to East Lake a few times, you know, uh, a very, very good career. What are the big takeaways from going from what is now modern equipment to the clubs that you probably hit a little bit as a kid? Exactly. I probably had persimmon like wood woods until I was like eight or 10 years old, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but really it was... I, I kind of was interested in it for a couple of reasons. One, the course I play at most of the time in Atlanta is a nine hole course. It's probably, you know, 3,300 yards. So if you play it twice and we do sometimes it's 65, 6,600 yard golf course, it's awesome right in the middle of Midtown, but it's a sh relatively short, uh, pure greens. You know, it's Atlanta. It's not really windy. It's hot in the summers. Like you can kind of go around and play kind of driver sand wedge, hit a bunch of greens, shoot kind of the same score every time. And then the other part, I play a decent amount of Monday charity golf and a decent amount of business golf. And I want to be social and play with like my, you know, play the same tees. And I'm not a long hitter at all. Like I was the shortest hitter on the tour, hence not on the tour anymore. <laughs> uh, but I was like, hey, maybe if I play the same tees with some older clubs, it'll be a little bit more social and I won't be hitting driver 65 yards from the green all the time. So that was, that was the reason I, I, I did the experiment. That is one of the amazing things about, about the clubs. I, I had, I was, I played a hickory driver one set at national golf links and I played with three guys that were handicap levels of like eight to 15. Yeah. Um, and we, I, we played the same tees and we were hitting from generally the same spot. And it was an amazing, um, you know, experience in the sense of it keeps you close together with people. Yep. Yep. It definitely does. And the, I mean, I played, so I've, I've had them for about eight weeks and I play like once a week. Right. Um, and a couple things, one, you have to hit them pure and you have to swing at them correctly. So I've got a persimmon woods and then. I have a set of 19, I think they're 1982, 1983 tour model Titleist blades. And I fit up the lies and lofts. I like put modern grips on them. They have good shafts and they're like, they're super pure. They, those are, those are formerly Labron Harris, USAM winners clubs. Really? Yeah. That's, well, I don't that's think they've they're... been hit since he won the USAM because they're in perfect condition. <laughs> I don't think he ever hit them. My friend got them. He just dropped off a couple bags of big tour bags full of old clubs. And, and my friend sent them to me and that's how they got to you by way. That's of, awesome. I was just an intermediary and, and you know, in the, yeah. in the deal. No, much appreciated. They're sweet. Um, but I, so the, the results are, and like warm weather, right? Because it just recently kind of got cool down here. But good warm weather. I carry my driver 270, 275, my Callaway. And I carry the Woody 240 if I pure it. So, and then the irons are almost a club weak. And then they just not, they're super pure. Like I think I play with them. Like my results are about as good. But I hit a seven iron. Instead of hitting a seven iron 170, it goes 155. So you're looking at, the game being like a completely different proportion. Like the f a 400 yard hole is now a driver and a seven or an eight iron, as opposed to a driver and a 52 degree wedge, right? And so it's just, a, it's a totally different deal. I think the big thing from my, you know, year and a half doing it was the carry distance of the driver. Yeah. All of a sudden, like 240, it, you're pumping it and if it if the course is firm and fast, like the ball is going to get out there, it, you can get it out there two eighty. Especially with the modern ball, it kind of knuckles. It yeah. doesn't get up the way you know. I think if you were playing an optimized ball, you might be able to get a little bit more carry out of it. But just bringing it back that much brings so much more hazards into the game. And then what I notice is when you're just consistently hitting like two or three more clubs into the greens. 
it is just such a harder game. Yeah. It's totally different. And then par threes are the same. Like that 190 par three, like if it's warm out, I can like turn down a six iron or just hit a five. Like the 190 is a three iron with those, with that vintage set. And if you don't hit it right in the mouth, it's going 165, <laughs> you know? And the, and the crazy thing is that I, so I, I used them exclusively for like eight weeks. And then Saturday I went to hit a few balls and I got my gamers back out and I have never had that good of numbers on my driver because I basically learned with the persimmon that if to swing up on it more and all 14 of the vintage clubs, if you don't hit them right in the middle. And honestly, I picked up like three, four yards with my irons. Like I had comfortable distance with my irons and I was swinging four up on a driver, 26, 2700 spin. And I have struggled for 20 years to get under 3000 spin. So the first time, and I wasn't even trying to, like I had just basically learned how to hit a driver properly by playing these old heavy clubs. And it was pretty wild. I mean, really wild. I, I you know, I, it's funny. I got, I got, one of the reasons I got into this rabbit hole is some of my clubs broke, like my irons, the poxy wore off. And anybody that knows me, it's like the worst thing. Everybody's like, oh, it take two seconds for somebody to fix it. It's like, well, it's not that. It's me getting to somewhere somebody will fix it. You know, so anyways, that's what that kind of threw me into this where I just started playing with the old irons. Then I went to the old woods. But anyways, I felt the same way is that I came out of it a f way better golfer. A, I was missing a lot, a lot more greens. So I was chipping more. So I became just like way better around the greens. B, I actually think I picked up speed with a modern driver because I was playing a heavy persimmon driver for a year and a half. And like you said, you really have to hit up on the ball, especially with the modern ball, because the ball, that's the only way you're going to get it up into the air. Yeah. And it really made me realize how lazy I swing at my modern driver. Like I yes. kind of, unless I'm playing, and I rarely ever play like Shinnecock. It's like 7,400 yard parse, right? Like most of my golf, I'm just making lazy swings and it goes out there like 265 and it rolls and I hit a wedge into the green, right? If I'm playing an up tee, especially with the persimmon driver, you cannot make a lazy swing. Like you have got to rear, you've got to turn and you've got to try to smoke it. The only way to hit a, a really good shot is to try to smoke that persimmon driver. It's like the old videos of like Seve or Norman hitting drivers. Like, if Rom swung that hard at a driver today, he would hit it like 400 yards. You had to like crank on it. And then when I went back to the modern driver, I was still trying to crank on it and I was shipping it for me. Again, I'm short. So are, is this your announcement that you're coming back to a PGA Tour golf? Because you're no, you know, but I wish I eight had, weeks. <laughs> I wish I had, I would have never done this when I was playing because, you know, everything's got to be so finely tuned. But I really wish like on an off week, I would have played or practiced for three days with a vintage set. I do think it would have helped. I, you know, I think there is like a thing where you get in some driver ruts with modern driver and it's like, it's just really, it's really just bad habits. And when you put that, like there's something about when you look down at the persimmon or uh, in that small head, it makes you refocus and, and really think about making a good swing. And as you said, like, you know, you have to turn right. And, and that focus, I think, like if you're in a driver rut, it sounds so, and it's just like anything in golf, right? It's counterintuitive. It's like, Hey, you know, if you're struggling with your driver, put this persimmon in for a day and a half, and then you're going to be better. You're going to take this harder to hit club is going to get you out of the rut because yeah. it's, it's just like, you have to focus on hitting it. Well, like yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. It's like, it sounds so simple, but like the focus that requires it will make you a better player. Uh, do you have like a uh, a favorite memory of somebody like looking at it and wanting to hit it? Well, I played in our Georgia Tech fundraiser on Monday. And so I don't have a big sample size here, but I was at the range like four or six weeks ago and Vince Whaley, who plays on the PGA Tour now. And Vince is probably one of the 50 best drivers of the ball on the planet. Like, He's a phenomenal driver. It's a joke. And he picked up this persimmon and it was going shorter, but it was this, it was like this, it was absolute high lasers. It was really impressive. So then the Georgia tech team at our fundraiser, they grab it and kind of the same thing happened. I mean, 
one of the guys that's kind of battling for the five, six spot, he pulled it out and the first two or three were like pretty ugly, right? Like really pretty rough. And then uh, this freshman that we've got from Louisiana who swings it like a tour player, he tees this driver up and I, he hit like a 280 yard laser on the first swing he made. So I think like really good drivers doesn't affect as much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's like the, the clip of Rory from the summer um, in Scotland when he hit that one and it carried, you know, I think it was, I think the carry was like 287 and it's like that's, the guys that's that are so far. The, I, it, this is like the whole point. And I think like the, the thing, and maybe who knows what happens. I feel like the entire professional games in flux. And one of the things that's right. also just lingering out there that would, if it was any other year, be like storyline one a is like, what's going on with the, with the ball and, and the rollback. But somehow right now it's like storyline um, F, you know, maybe yeah. it's like completely out of the, the news cycle. Um, but, you know, one of my hopes long-term is that they get, you know, to some level of understanding that the game's going to be regulated and the driver head is, is looked at because to me, just making that head smaller reward skill. And that's really what, what equipment should be doing at the highest level of the game. Yeah. Yeah. But it's been fun. It's been, and then of course I went a little bit down the eBay, you know, I ordered another set of persimmon woods <laughs> that I found <laughs> the irons will never be top. They're, they're absolutely perfect um i when i went back to the modern driver a couple rounds but kept the irons in i hit him a club buy? shorter but i got a like a full set of tony pennis oh nice <laughs> the driver's a little beat up but the three four and five wood are money that's i'm sure you could find somebody to refinish it you know yeah Even... it just i just don't hit it like it does it's it's not good like it's okay. All it, right. it just doesn't come off right i think that one needs to be retired I... to the I mean, that's what the way the clubs are. like. I, I couldn't imagine playing pro golf in the like 80s and 70s and and even early 90s, where it's like you're trying these clubs and like some just work, some don't compared to now where it's like right. this like science of like, this is your club, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, and then you think about all the careers that kind of like made some bad equipment decisions and it's like, oh, he, he lost like five years uh, because he played a terrible golf ball. Yeah, but that's something that doesn't really happen anymore. That happened yeah. during the first part of my career. Um, you had like the Stuart Applebee's and the guys that went, that switched. And then everyone makes such good stuff now. It doesn't happen to anyone anymore. It really like Xander, Rom, they've all switched and they are still one and three in the world or whatever they are. I, I don't, maybe it does, but I, I haven't seen it happen in the last like five to eight years, whereas it did used to happen. I was before. I got my new clubs. I was using a 20. It was the Callaway Apex Pro. Remember the black head is like probably a 2015 driver. Yeah. And now I have the Paradigm. And yeah. I have to say, it's like astonishing how how good the driver is. I know. It's really good. <laughs> like, it's like hard to move the ball. Like, I struggle because like my cut doesn't move. Yeah. It's like it just goes straight. Like, the problem is it goes straight. And I still am used to setting up down the left edge of the fairway and cutting the ball. Yeah. You know, and it's just a weird, weird thing where it's just, I mean, it's not a weird thing. It's just, it's a, it's crazy how much better from 2015 to 2023 the drivers have gotten. Yeah. I mean, they're the, astonishing. The one thing I have not done with the vintage set yet is play a really hard golf course. Um, like my <laughs> other home course is like setting down. We have the U.S. Open qualifying there every other year, 7,300 yards, like really long, hard golf course. I didn't get up there to play. I would play it from a tee up. I wouldn't play the vintage set from the back, but that golf course from like 69, 7,000 with the vintage set, I was really, I'm really excited to do it because like 70 would be like a damn good score, right? Like 71. And if I shot 75, like I could easily see myself like shooting 76 on a bad day, right? I think the thing too, I having done it is like I played some really great rounds, like really great rounds with them, but you just have to be so you have to be cooking. Yeah. Like yeah. It, 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 it's like what I found was it's really easy to fall into that. I shot like seventy, and this is just me. You're obviously a much better player than me, but it's like I shot seventy-five to eighty 
is like where I felt, but like then I felt like I could still go pretty low. It's just hard to generate a ton of birdie chances if you don't have a ton of wedges, right? Totally. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on.